Hi, I told you in my breaking news segment about Trump's emergency plane landing. Turned out to be totally fine. But then he posted a video, we covered that. And in that segment, I said I would do a follow-up on the speech itself that he was headed to in Bozeman, Montana, if anything was notable. And indeed, we got some notable things. So let's talk about it. A bunch of clips to play for you. I haven't actually, before getting into that, I haven't actually watched a full uninterrupted Trump speech in a really long time for obvious reasons. It's a terrible experience. Uh, but today, because I was trying to decide, do I do a late night segment about this or go to bed? I did just sit and watch it. And through the stories we do, obviously we look at a lot of these clips, but just all at once, further emphasize, he's super rattled. He's super shaken up about how much Harris is not just gaining, but now leading him in the polls at least the surge the momentum the excitement around her campaign is terrifying trump so that was noticeable how frazzled he was about this and i think one of the ways that came through was he was extra glitchy again in watching the whole thing i couldn't even find all the clips that i watched throughout it live but then went back to watch uh particular clips and We'll look at a few examples of what I'm talking about, but just the whole speech, his, his mouth kept not following his brain's directives. And again, this part of the conversation is being further discussed as it should be given that now he, he is the oldest presidential nominee in the history of the United States and Kamala Harris seems far more, is far more mentally fit for the job. But here's an example. Look at the way his face sort of reacts to this glitch. Onto the, onto the lives of our children. We're not ooh, 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 that is brutal. Look at onto this. The, onto the lives of our children. We're not going to. That's actually really concerning. That That's a serious, the way his face. Onto the, onto the lives of our children. Ooh, yeah. That reminded me of this one, by the way. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be doing... Oh. Just sort of the face contorting, really showing the magnitude of those glitches. Then you have less severe ones, but noticeable like this. Deportation. He didn't want the person deported. Deportated, always a little... A little twitch there when those happen you just have other examples like this one again trying to give you a sense of if you would have watched the full thing what was going on i did do a lot of driving i'd go to one we went to some friends some a really good friend's house with you yep all right and let's see do we have more i guess here <laughs> as well the most and she wants it to be an abc because abc abc with george stop adopting have you ever heard of him? And that's not even the nickname that he normally calls him. So discombobulated there and saying A, B, F, V. Uh, here saying border incorrectly. And last month, a Venezuelan illegal alien criminal led in by our so-called barter czar, the border. Right. Barter czar. So that first one really actually is concerning to me. These are more lighthearted did the nafta disaster concealed and think of that we got out of tpp do you know what tpp that's if you ended the it's really again the mouth is not operating as requested from the brain so those are a few examples of that just the whole speech super glitchy i think a part of that is whenever he's stressed panicked we saw at the press conference, he can either go into two extremes. One is real bummed out. And at the press conference, he was really pouty and bummed out. The other is he sort of goes manic mode and he's way more energetic. But when he's more energetic, talking more quickly, the brain uh, deterioration that we've been observing can come out more noticeably maybe. Because he's going so quickly and stumbling over his words and sort of having a, a tough time communicating effectively. But he was definitely more amped up. And like I said, that came through in a rattled way to me. Uh, then you have this sentence that a lot of people online were already commenting on. Just what, what is he trying to say here? 
gee, these are, these are fierce people. These are fierce people. They don't even know who the head of our country is. Who do we have? Are we dealing with Biden? Biden probably should get out, but she should get out also. I think they should both get out. I'll tell you what. Do we have a volunteer? Yes, I will volunteer, okay? We have to straighten out. We have to straighten out our country. They're not going to... I think, let's see, Biden probably should get out, but she should get out. I think they both should get out. I'll tell you what, do we have a volunteer? Yes, I'll volunteer. Okay. I honestly think even though he doesn't have a handle of the English language, it seems enough to just communicate this in a normal way. I think what he's trying to say is Xi Jinping, Kim Jong-un, Vladimir Putin, all of his best friends, they don't even know who's in charge. And so both Kamala Harris and Biden should get out of the White House, maybe, or get out of the race. And then he skips a thought. Does anyone want to volunteer to be the person who's running the country, coordinating with those other world leaders? And he says he'll volunteer. But that's deciphering and stretching apart what is just him jumping around frazzled i go back to that term and this was interesting to show how unfortunate it is in his mind that uh biden dropped out of the race because of how strong the harris campaign now is he just spent time reflecting on that and talking about sort of insults against biden and i saw people responding saying dude let it go he's out he's not he's not in the race anymore buddy we're going to get Joe Biden out of the White House. What's he doing now? Greg, what's he doing? You know, he wanted to debate. If we didn't have a debate, he'd still be there. Can you imagine if we didn't have a debate? Why the hell did I debate him? Yeah. Wait, this beginning part I want to... We're going to get Joe Biden out of the White House. What's he... We're going to get Joe Biden out of the White House. He know you're not running against Joe Biden anymore. He knows that, right? No, he definitely went after Harris a lot. So he knows that, but he knows that whoever wins, whoever wins in this election, Biden will be leaving the White House because Harris would be taking over or Trump, God forbid. But him indicating... He wishes Biden were still in the race, which now seeing the comparison between Biden's matchup in the polls and in enthusiasm versus Harris's matchup against Trump, it makes sense he would want to go back to when he seemed favored with Biden, but it's not going to happen, even though at this same rally, a clip I don't have, but something he's been saying a lot is, you know, people are saying that, that Biden might show up to the DNC and try to take the nomination back. People around Mar-a-Lago are saying it. Well, one person. (laughs) It's just his wishful thinking. It's just him wanting that to happen. It's not going to. Uh, So he's sort of trying to speak it into existence. But he tries to convince us that I I don't care who it is. I actually think, and he said this in recent events, I actually think Harris is going to be easier to defeat. Really? Then why are you spending so much time reflecting on when you perceive things to have been better. And another thing he's really triggered by is Kamala Harris is one of the things making him so panicked and thus discombobulated. He really hates that she's now getting bigger crowds than him. I think we're gonna write up one standard speech. You read it from beginning to end. You know what would happen? You'd start walking out. They'd say, oh, look, Trump's not holding. How about yesterday? They said, oh, she had a big crowd. Oh, the crowd, the press is talking about the crowd. In New Jersey, I had 107,000 people. The press never even talked about it. In they don't talk about it. right? They don't talk about it because they're fake. In I went to South Carolina. We had eight- and he always misstates his crowd sizes, but that's a conversation that we've already had before. Instead, he didn't have anywhere close to 107,000 people, <laughs> but. Kamala Harris had a real 20,000 people in Phoenix, Arizona, and it was packed. Now, I told you 
that I would be clear with you about this rally. It did look like this was also a, a big rally that Trump had. And you can see that's a lot of people. And it's showing one side, but I'm sure the other side is also filled up. I've seen comparisons of sort of earlier in the day for the Trump rally where it looks like there's no one there. And as Kamala Harris is speaking, so it's packed. Let's not play those games. But the point is that Harris is getting massive rallies, which just a few weeks ago was not a thing as a part of the Democratic uh, campaign. And she's really motivating people. And that's what's freaking Trump out. And yes, I do think I'd have to obviously see the numbers, the size of the venues, but I think the Harris rally had to be bigger because it was a huge, huge venue. And he hates that. That's what he hates. Uh, then he says this. Sometimes referred to as Kamala. You just get about nine different ways of pronouncing the name. And because the press is so dishonest, no matter how you say it, they'll say you were wrong. You were wrong. I don't care if I get it right. Actually, I couldn't care less. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he's just incorrect that the press will say he got it wrong no matter how he says her name. Because get this, there's one way, like all of us, to say our names correctly. It's Kamala. Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. I, sometimes I feel like saying it a few times to sort of get it in people's heads. And I always say people make totally genuine mistakes with pronunciations of all sorts of names. But with MAGA, it seems intentional because I've explained it to the face of a Trump supporter before and they immediately say it wrong back at me. Okay, well, I'm not trying to make this the biggest issue because it is something you can totally accidentally mess up it's just a strange thing for you to be so intentional about messing up and then here he does the wishful thinking thing again they talk about women i think suburban w women like me a lot you know it's fake stuff why wouldn't they why wouldn't they? where did that come from he was probably sitting on his plane with someone or recently talking to someone and they're saying you're just losing so much support from suburban women for obvious reasons he shouldn't be surprised by that but uh his way of trying to undo that is just by saying the opposite he said in that video that we covered on his plane right after it landed you know we're up in all the polls i just got word we're up in all the polls no you didn't or someone told you that so that you could be happy enough to go do this speech this is not true Okay, the opposite trend's happening. And then suburban women, same thing, a group he's struggling with. So instead of coming up with an adjustment to his campaign that could change that fact, instead of figuring out a message that could be more compelling to people, instead he just says, no, you like me. It's sort of like people are really upset, obviously, with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And he just repeats over and over no, people are supportive of that. Everyone's supportive. Everyone wanted that. Everyone wanted that. Everyone wanted that. Everyone wanted that. Every and he just says it as many times as he can to try to convince people it's true. But it doesn't work. And uh, here's more. That now she doesn't want any of it. And then they accuse me of being horrible oh. when I question her. She wanted to be non-energy independent. She wants windmills all over the place. Windmills. Put a windmill on top of the building. But it would, we have so much oil under our feet. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any country in the world, including Saudi Arabia. And the United States is drilling more than any country in the history of the world right now, despite his claims to the contrary. The of this. What they are doing is, in my opinion, totally illegal. Kamala is grossly incompetent and, in my opinion, has a very low IQ. But we'll find out about her IQ during the debate. OK, let's find out about her IQ. We'll find out about someone's, uh, someone's IQ at the debate. <laughs> and yeah, we talked about in a recent segment the way that Trump has been going back to very 2011 birtherism-esque stuff with his attacks against Vice President Harris's identity, now posting her birth certificate. And 
what I talked about wasn't actually to credit him. Chris Christie was the person who made this point in a way that now I've been echoing. This is what Trump does when he's desperate. He just sort of relies on his instincts. Christie said that he's more willing to be, Trump that is, more disciplined, more politically strategic when he feels like he's leading. He can stay on script better. When he starts getting desperate and feels like he's losing, he lashes out. He does these personality attacks. And that's what we're seeing here. And with the discipline campaign uh, on the Harris side, if what we're going up against is him saying she's low IQ, you're just going to get crushed electorally. That's just how it's going to go. Then he's also triggered by Tim Walls and the now much of the Democratic movement saying a lot of these MAGA individuals, leaders, and their favorite issues to obsess over, just sort of weird. He said, well, think of that. Think of the things I just said. Then he said, you know, I think J.D. Vance is weird. You know, it's a word that they use. I think he calls me that too. No, we're not. We're, we're very solid people. We want to have strong borders. We want to have good. And on to that. I just think as a matter of... Uh, as a matter of strategy or perception, it's just never gonna make you look correct to go, I'm not, I'm not weird. I promise I'm not weird. Just ignore it or levy attacks the other way. But the I'm not weird sentence, if you have to say that, something's gone awry. He also said this about John Tester, the senator from Montana. His name is John Tester and and I don't speak badly about somebody's physical disability, but he's got the biggest stomach I have ever seen. I swear. I swear. That's the biggest stomach I have never. Some of these crowd members look a little uncomfortable. Never seen a stomach like that. Because he doesn't look that heavy. You're not allowed to use the word fat. So if you use the word fat. You can say obese, you can say anything, but you can't say fat. That's the end of your political career. I said it the other night, somebody in the audience said... Chris By the way, the second he said fat, as I was watching this, I said he's going to bring up the Chris Christie story that he tells over and over. Every time the word fat comes up, he tells the same story. Career. I said it the other night, somebody in the audience said Chris Christie is a fat pig and I said sir Chris Christie is not a fat pig you should not and we argued about it for three or four minutes so that was it. yeah that obviously uh, never happened but he finds that to be a very funny story to tell and I know this segment is getting rather long just one other thing uh Ronnie Jackson Dr. Ronnie Jackson who was uh, one of the doctors who worked under Trump and others he came on stage and was given the weirdest vibes. He said that I, he, he labeled me on TV as the candy man. Watch the way he's licking his lips. Oh, and this clip's not, not loading. Um, as I desperately try to keep this segment under 20 minutes, take a look at this. He, that I, he, he labeled me on TV as the candy man. Right? He said that I was recklessly prescribing narcotics. I can tell you, I can count right here on this hand right here, how many times I prescribed narcotics at the White House in 14 years. He put that out there. He said that I got drunk and wrecked a government vehicle. Any two-bit investigator can figure out whether or not that happened. He knew it didn't happen. The frantic licking of the lips is, uh, is something to behold. And I, I'm not, I don't think this is relevant. But this video was getting circulated in response to the bizarre vibes that he was giving off and the denying of, of some of those things. Just a very, very strange, strange video from his time in Congress. Oh, I forgot about that doozy. I had more, but we don't want to drag this on super long. So let me know what you thought of that in the comments. If you want to get extra content daily, you can do so by clicking the join button below.